Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, update, I bought a Canon GX7 Mark II. Um, as you can see, probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll be able to see that the quality of the camera has actually, I just spat, the quality of the video should be drastically improved from my phone because it's a completely new, better quality camera. Um, I wanted to get this camera for quite a while now and um, it's still kind of hard to get used to. I've used it like twice so far. It's very strange using it because this comes with a flip screen so now I can actually see what I'm recording instead of like having to check every time I record like I had to with my other camera and my phone. Actually not so much with my phone because there was the front camera and the back camera so there wasn't the issue with that. But I don't know what's going on with my camera now. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so basically, in today's video, I kind of just wanted to start 2019 properly with the proper video, kind of just explaining um, the solo travel aspect of travelling. I said in my 2018-19 slash um, continuous, like, continuum video that I would, um, I'm still getting used to it, like I keep looking at the camera then I keep looking at myself, I don't know where to look, I'm going to look at either or I'll get used to it one eventually. Um, basically I just said I wanted to kind of explain my process um, in booking and what it was like doing a solo travel um, vlog, what it was kind of like solo travelling and like the biggest hurdles I faced and Kind of just like, it's kind of like a story time, but more descriptive. So number one, this is the first topic I kind of want to cover, which was the part where I kind of had to like pluck up the courage to bring myself to finally just go for it and book it and book the hotel and just like, go for it. So this happened when I was in Bali with my family last year. I was just in my room chilling and I saw a flight to Amsterdam for 40 quid return. I was like, that's a good deal. Um... And then I looked at loads of other places like Iceland, like Copenhagen, um, Oslo, Stockholm, um, Spain, just loads of places. I was just looking at the everywhere function of the Skyscanner app. If you know, you know how good that function is. It's a godsend. Um, like Dublin was 20 quid for a return by that time I was up. That whole thing was kind of just like... Me scanning around, like looking at flights, looking at where's the cheapest to go, and like sometimes you find out the cheapest place, the cheapest flights are the most expensive places to go and like spend money at, so like food and activity wise. So the more expensive flights are the places where it's cheaper to have, act have an actual holiday, in my experience. Uh, basically, after a few like hours of just scrolling and seeing what I could find. I stumbled upon Amsterdam and I was like, I wanted to go again, like, I've got an itinerary, itinerary, of what I want to do, um, I was like, it's in like five months, um, book it, um, and this may seem quite sudden in terms of me booking it, um, there had been quite a lot of build up in terms of like Thailand, me wanting to go to Thailand, that falling through and like, um, Bali on my own and stuff like that. There was instincts in me to go on my own previously, but I never plucked up the courage to do so. And I think the main thing that kind of set it in stone for me was remind being reminded again in the present that I was still experiencing the left out nature of things and I was like, there's a, there's a situation that you've been given. You can either deal with it or be your own person and kind of get over it. And I chose the latter because after this constant cycle of um, events happening, there was a point where I was like, I can't keep worrying about people leaving me out and picking me up when they want and when they feel good. And that is how I kind of just went for it. There was a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. So once I booked the flights, I was like... What the hell do I do now, basically? Um, and I sat there for like a good two, three hours just sitting there like... What have I done? But then I like thought to myself, I was like, do you know what? At this point in time, my head was kind of like in... So the build-up, my kind... So the build up to this event, my head was kind of into 
one side saying go for it and do it, the other was like no, it was 50-50, but at this point my brain was more 95% do it and 5% oh, you shouldn't. And then I think the 95% overrided the 5% and I kind of just went for it and obviously you're going to get the anxiety and everything, like the stress and the fear, but I think the the most important stage of booking something like solo, especially when you have problems around anxiety and like doing new things and things like that, um, especially in my situation, I think that was the biggest hurdle I faced. After that, it all kind of just like fell into place. So after I booked that, I was like, well, okay, now I need somewhere to stay. Um, so I sorted that out. I was I'll stay at Clink, where I've stayed at before because it was a nice ho uh, hostel. Um, I looked at some other places, but Clink worked out to be cheaper. Um, there was that whole initial booking fear that I've kind of you kind of just had to push yourself push yourself into it, like jumping right at the, jumping into the deep end. Basically, um, a lot of people ask me what like how I don't know how you do it. I think there is a build up. You have to like start small, which I did like in second year, like I went to the cinema on my own and like things like that. I went out a couple of times to eat on my own and that kind of just like set it for me and then I, I gradually brought it up and then I just went for it. So I think that's a good way of going about it um, because in the beginning it's going to seem so overwhelming, but baby steps. So number two, small steps, big decisions. Obviously. It sounds corny as hell, but small steps lead to big decisions. And that's what I kind of just said before, like, the big decision was me finally doing a trip on my own to show myself that I'm independent and I'm capable of doing things and I don't really need... I don't need to have a reliance on everyone else all the time, like... I'd get really anxious around people, so basically social anxiety, but I've not really been diagnosed with social anxiety. Um, but it's kind of a heavy fear, like, I just always fear that people are judging me, like, thinking about what I'm doing, like, why am I there, like, um, what I'm doing there, like, just staring, like, people are just, it's very overwhelming, like, it's a, it's a crock pot of, um, basically just sad emotions, and I think that's one of the biggest things that's been holding me back, was just the fear of being judged, um, so, small steps to kind of, like, eradicate, eradicate? Small steps to kind of get rid of that initial fear, and then that small, those small steps will build up into a final big like moment. Number three, booking. Um, that kind of goes hand in hand with number one because in my experience, I kind of bundled up everything together and just did it. But if you were to follow in that step where like you use a gradual process to build up and then you book it, that's a good way of going about it. Sorry. That is, on the topic of social anxiety, there is the whole issue about eating out. I think that was one of the things I was really worried about when I planned this trip. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to have to eat out on my own. And people are going to be like, why is he on his own? But, do not fret. You can get a table in the corner, in the middle, in the open, outside. No one bats an eyelid. Literally no one cares. I just went to a lot of places to eat when I was in Amsterdam and I kind of just like did my own thing, like vlogs and stuff, and it was completely fine. Like no one cared because everyone was doing their own thing. So there's this overwhelming fear about what strangers are going to think of you eating out and they're going to be like, oh, he's sad, he's lonely. No one cares. Everyone's doing their own thing and I kind of knew that in my head to start off with, I was like, no, no one really cares and no one's really going to know you after you leave, but I think, I'm too close to the camera, um, but I think it's a, it's a rational, like, irrational, rational, it's a thought that comes through everyone's minds in, like, the beginning, but I think that was one of the most anticlimactic, anticlimactic, anticlimactic fears that I had. Solo travel is scary. Um, I'm gonna say that it is one of the most terrifying things I've ever done because you're kind of just like dumped in a place and you're like, oh my god, what do I do? But I've been brought up to be very 
self independent and like know my way around things like how to like buy tickets for like buses like planes um that kind of stuff I learnt myself but things like self awareness and like organisation is all is being like ingrained in me from a young age with like school work and everything and like event planning and stuff like that. Um so I've kind of like been prepared so it wasn't as bad but it is scary like you're in the middle of the airport and you're like what now but I knew what I was doing because I've traveled before like I went to America like a couple of years back to stay with my sister but I did the whole flight thing everything on my own um so I know how to work my way around the airport and stuff but it's very like what do I do after I'm out the out of the airport like what do I do go and eat do I go check in um you go and check in um obviously basically I kind of wanted to do this trip to teach myself that I was capable and like independent as I said so what it has allowed me to do is kind of experience solo travel and know what changes I need to make in terms of like interacting with other people when I'm there because I kind of kept myself to myself because of my vlogging and stuff like that when I went so I'm gonna be hopefully trying to go and do interrailing this year um solo and then I want to go do Thailand and Vietnam and Sri Lanka um, next year because I'm going to take a year out after I finish my degree and then go and do a master's. So uh, yeah, the, I think it was really good for me to go and do the small solo trip because it's now allowed me to kind of feel really confident enough to want to book such a big trip alone away for a long time. Um, and I don't think I would have been able to do it if I hadn't gone through with this trip. So, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a thumbs up. Please leave a thumbs up. Please leave a like. And please don't forget to subscribe. Um, I want to make more travel content. More uni-related videos as well. Which I will need to get around to doing. But dissertation. Priorities. Um, we will do that. Um, but other than that, that is it for this video. Um, I'm just going to leave the video with something I wanted to um, start the video by saying but I kind of forgot and then remembered it was in the notes whenever I'm in a scary situation or trying something that's out of my comfort zone I always remember my granddad's stories of exploring the unknown that's what keeps me sane and lets me challenge myself to new things it's the small things in life that make you remember that fear is faulty. it can be broken and overcome but the best way to view it is that fear is our best friend I shall see you guys in my next video. See you later.